What's up guys, this is Aaron or AJ Markle here and welcome to the show. The AJ Markle Show where I talk about random subjects that I think you guys would certainly love. Before we get to that, hit the bell icon so you don't miss out any videos. And if you're a member, you'll be able to see these every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time and then goes public at 7 Eastern Time. Without further ado, here are the two subjects. Number one, we're going to talk about if I was. And number two, we're going to talk about discussion. And there will be a section of how to support me on the way. But anyway, let's get to if I was the head of YouTube. I am aware that YouTube has had its ups and downs, especially with new policies and new updates to the terms of service that make it very, very hard for people to trust what YouTube is doing. And it makes it even harder whenever people don't get that communication where you're a creator and you don't have the communication with YouTube, it makes it harder and the guidelines even scared the YouTuber if they don't know what the heck is going on. If I was the creator, there's best friend in terms of being the CEO, in terms of making sure the guidelines are acceptable for everyone, it will be understandable. But I also want to make sure to keep that communication there so people would understand and there will be less of a bias and less of a unfairness towards big and small creators alike. However, it doesn't mean, however, that I'm just going to side by and let people do whatever they want. There's still rules for a reason. Even to the point where there might be subjects that are not acceptable on YouTube, like specific elements of dark humor. I know there's some dark humor out there that people love to do, but it doesn't make it all okay for guidelines. That should be like the 18 and up category, which leads up to the first part, making 18 and up content, but there's a catch. The catch is the person has to be 18 and up in order to have access to the content and be able to create content online. It's not just a random person that could be on there. It needs to be 18 and up. After all, YouTube has a guideline that you have to be 13 to have an account, but People get away with that when their parents log them on YouTube. Sadly, that's part of the reason we have COPPA. Something to point out. And also, people need to know there's some content that is not okay on regular or YouTube kids, but there should be 18 up content. So that way YouTube has another platform on YouTube that they can get money from, but specifically for adults. And that way we don't have to worry about seeing these garbage adult ads on that part of YouTube unless they're 18 up. I mean, that would make sense, right? And also, less on the bot, more people on the reviews, so that way it would fix up these false flags and even these problems where YouTube has had people complain about unfairness involving the bot flagging videos unfairly. And it will also be good for the algorithm if people had more of a human, non-biased review and at least the algorithm in general. The algorithm has changed over time and sadly it's hurt even the biggest creators on the platform. I would make sure the algorithm is fair obviously, but that's not gonna be easy to do. And I will make the algorithm work to where people click and check certain videos rather than being just recommended automatically. They could like a specific amount of content, like say I like pizza, they like pizza for example, and they watch two, three, four, five videos on pizza. They might show like pizza challenges, how to make pizza, pizza wars, the list goes on. And it gets to a point where, okay, they're being recommended that. But then they expand to something else, like favorite sports team, like maybe you're a Dallas Cowboy fan. It hurts, I know. And even might be a Texas Ranger fan, hurts even more. And whatever things they like, the aggregators should be able to work it out that people can understand it but it also needs to improve that YouTube works things out. Lastly, the most important thing I think we should be aware of, more constant communication. I know, yes I know, that YouTube has recently come up with a new element to where now they have timestamps if a person gets a community guideline strike so they are aware what part in a specific video they got the community guideline strike. It will also help that it gives a communication to any creator that's in the YouTube partnership program. That also means that they have more of an open chance of knowing what they need to say or what does not need to show that violates YouTube's policies. Something to point out. With that said, 
Let's get to a very important thing I want to talk about before I talk about discussion about animations. So, there is a way you guys can support me, whether it's financially or not. The first one is obviously when it comes to financially, there's Super Chat and the Premier Chat, or Super Thanks, which you could go to the bottom of the video and you notice a heart with a dollar symbol, that's Super Thanks. That's kind of like giving a tip. That's what it's about. And there's even membership, so you can join membership as low as $4.99 and then $9.99. The, the reason I put that out there, not just so I could show stuff behind the scenes no one else can show, I got more content behind the scenes coming, but it also shows that you're supporting a creator and having a subscription to that creator. So that's something to point out. But on a non-financial level, how can you support me? So you don't have money, I understand. You could share the videos I've done, like, and comment on the videos so people in the algorithm could be noticed by what you've done and the more you share the more comments and likes out there that would help the YouTube video get out there but don't spam comment please that's not gonna help because spam comments can actually lead you to possibly getting removed off of YouTube if you continue to spam too much YouTube is tr YouTube's trying to get rid of those spam bots so that's kind of important I should have mentioned that earlier but I kind of see, see the point where people get removed because they spam comment. Spam likes, that might be a little different, but you gotta be careful about that because you don't want to get removed. And also, just these non-financial or financial actions can help me not only make YouTube a better place, but also help me financially and help me expand and make better quality content. It's not going to be easy, but it's work and I have fun doing it. That's what I like about YouTube. So yeah, that's enough of the little ad, I guess you might say, and let's get to the final segment, animation. Animation, whether it's 2D or 3D, is pretty good if you can do it right. And it could be Disney, Marvel, DC, or even other content. Even HBO has good animations, however, just because you have great animation, if you have a horrible story, all you have is a visual visual look. Basically, if visually, animation can be good on the surface. It's kind of like if you make a dessert on the outside look good and it looks very, very nice. But on the inside, it is not good. It rots and it basically does not taste good. That's kind of like animation. You make a good story and you may have good animation, you could actually make a good animation. I am aware about Velma, by the way, and it kind of represents a good visual until they mess up the writing and the plot. That's basically why Velma's getting a lot of hate. It's not getting hate because of the animation, it's getting hate because of the horrible story writing. That's basically it. It's not a matter of just because it ruins like childhood, which that's some of the problem. It's a matter of horrible writing. That is the same thing with several of the new animations nowadays. People love them because they have a good story and good visuals, but people don't like some because they have a horrible storyline. Now, granted, that, that could be vice versa. Like you could have a great story, but very garbage, trashy animation. And that could, that could cause a lot of problems. Because if you have a good visual but horrible story, eventually it falls apart. And if you have a good story but poor animation, that also falls apart. And animation is not just limited to 2D. There's 3D as well and computer generated and other sorts of animations. I mean, you guys could probably comment down your favorite animations that actually did well not only as a story but also in visual. But you can also point out some horrible animation but a good story and good animations but horrible story so it builds up over time to what you're looking for in terms of animation so yeah that's basically my discussion on animations and wh why we need to be careful about a good story and good animations because that over time can be very good but it's also important to know your audience too because if you don't know your audience you're screwed at the start so yeah that's a kind of important all right guys so if you guys liked what i've said so far please like I said, like, share, and subscribe. Check out the past episodes I've done, uh, playlists, and also be sure to share it around with whoever you want. Besides, I can't do it without you guys. 
and I make this content every week so that way I can expand to multiple people and multiple audiences. With that said, I'm going to sign off for now. God bless. You rock. Don't you ever forget it.